all here this morning. Uh, so came in high classes of 24 and 25. Thanks for being with us this morning, distinguished guests and friends. Welcome to the 23-24 induction ceremony to the Canyon High School Hall of Fame. We're excited to induct three prestigious candidates into the Canyon High Hall of Fame today. One unofficial motto here at Canyon High School, at least since I've been the principal, is new beginnings, rich traditions. We're committed to empowering lifelong success so we work really hard to balance the more than 100 years of rich traditions here at Canyon High School with innovative learning and skills that our students need today to be able to go out and be successful in the world where they will work and serve. In the midst of an always ever-changing world, at least one thing has stayed the same, at least right here at Canyon High School, and that is excellence. Even today, we are excellent in pretty much everything we do. Ag, athletics, the fine arts, academics, everything we do. We're so proud of the excellence here at Canyon High School. And since everything in the world has changed, only one thing must be the constant in our excellence. And that is the students, both past and present, here at Canyon High School. I'm sure that all of you are familiar with the Canyon High alma mater. We still sing it at every football game and at every pep rally. Our students know the words. And I want to remind you that every time you sing the song, you're making a pledge. Many of you could probably recite it with me now. Uh, we'll give our best for Canyon High School now. And the three outstanding individuals that we're inducting into the Hall of Fame today, they weren't just saying empty words when they made that promise so many years ago. They gave their best for Canyon High School then and now. And they're a great example to our students today of how to give their best not only to Canyon High School, but to their families, to their churches, their careers, and their communities. They've given their all. Their success proves how much they've given. And so it's our honor today to induct these candidates into the Hall of Fame. Candidates, I hope your hearts are filled with gladness and pride today. We're proud to induct you into the Hall of Fame. Ian? Please join me in our pledge to the American flag, the Texas flag, and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you, and you may be seated.
is my old friend. I come to talk with you again because a vision softly.
and it is my honor to introduce Canyon High School Hall of Fame inductee Michael Bella. Mike Bella has been a popular newspaper columnist, award-winning college professor, and best-selling author. He holds a Bachelor of Theology degree from Dallas Bible College, a Master of the Arts in English Literature from West Texas A&M University, and a PhD in Technical Communication from Texas Tech University. Dr. Bella has worked as a Christian camp director, the founding pastor of a church, and from 1993 to his retirement in 2016, he was a college English professor. His weekly column in the Amarillo Globe News ran from 1995 to 2000. In 2013, he received Amarillo College's highest teaching honor in the John F. Meade Faculty Excellent Award. And in 2015, Panhandle PBS selected Dr. Bella as an American graduate outstanding educator. He has written eight books. The first, Baby Boom Believers, Tidal House, 1988, was the, was the finalist for Christian Booksellers Associated Gold Medallion Award. His latest work, 1001 1, Fundings to Do in Retirement, Best Year's Crest, 2022, ran for 14 weeks as a number one bestseller on Amazon. Though Bella spent most of his adult years working in Amarillo, he and his wife, Charlotte, raised their children in Canyon. He says it's a family tradition. Five generations of Bellas have been at Canyon High School graduates, a writer and a writing teacher. Bella chose to volunteer in activities and align with his vocation. He served on the Board of Friends of the Canyon Library and chair of the Friends of the Cornet Library. He is also a past president of Panhandle Professional Writers, now Texas High Plains Writers. As part of Canyon High School class of 1967, Bella played tuba in the Eagle Soaring Pride Band. He said that band trips and activities were the highlight of his days at CHS, and some 56 years later, he counts several of his fellow band members and close, as close friends. Bella also credits the teachers and atmosphere of CHS with giving him the academic skills and reader, which contributed to whatever success he has attained in his profession. Mr. Bell, welcome to Canyon High School Hall of Fame. We are proud to induct you today. Please come and share a few words with our audience. They know they got people from the 60s today. <laughs> that was so cool. Well, before I start, I want to give a shout out to some special people. If you're a member of the 2023 Canyon High School Soaring Pride Band, would you stand really quick? And I know some of you remember hearing, if you're up in the other audience and you're not playing today, thank you. You can be seated. Now, these are, these are my people. That's where I hang out here. Uh, we hadn't evidently learned to soar yet. We were just the pride of Kenya High School. So, you guys have to tell me about soaring a little bit later. Uh, one more recognition. If you are a tuba player in the soaring pride band, would you stand for just a moment, tubas? Woo You guys, I think, I know I'm biased, but I think that the band is the, is the heart of any, uh, especially Texas high school, and, and the tubas are the heart of the band. <laughs> and the reason I say that uh, is because they provide a lot of the spirit and the passion, probably because they're naturally rowdy people, the tuba players. Just how rowdy are tuba players? Well, I learned in the four years that I was in band that rowdiness is increases exponentially with number one, the size of one's instrument, and number two, the distance one sits from the podium, from the band director. So two players are a good bit rowdier than clarinet and flute players. Some are more rowdy than trombones and French horns and baritones, although sometimes from year to year that switches a little bit. 
but they're not nearly as over the top as those crazy drivers. So, uh, in 1967, if we were about to take the field and somehow the twirler's baton uh, was missing, Mr. Zook would go right to the tuning section, maybe uh, look down those uh, bell on the Susan phone, you know, and it's amazing what you can step in the bell on the Susan phone. Uh, however, if the twirlers themselves were missing, that's right, those crazy drummers. They probably uh, captured this person or holding him from ransom or some sort. Well, I got more bad stories, but also. For one who has made his living with words, I've had trouble finding the right ones uh, to respond to this recognition. First off, I was blessed to be part of the exceptional class of 1967, dozens of whom deserve this honor more than I. So my gratitude is mixed with surprise and a fair amount of embarrassment. Nonetheless, I am grateful to God who rescued this troubled teenager and gave him a life worth living in the 60s. Um, and even though I question your, question your logic, grateful to those who nominated me. I love you guys, but a Rodney Tuba player, seriously? <laughs> Um, and I'm grateful to those, both students and teachers, who helped push me over the finish line some 56 years ago so I could begin this incredible journey that I've had. A line in our CH alma mater, which I noticed is on the back of your bulletin, says, We'll spend our lives in serving, for she has taught us how. You ever wonder how she taught us serving? Well, let me answer that with another question. I wonder, students now, at your age, and I certainly didn't at your age, I wonder if you know how incredibly blessed you are to be raised in the Canyon School District and attend Canyon High School, where administrators and staff and teachers every day put their, uh, your needs, before their own, so that they can help you succeed not only academically, but in life itself. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive, and there's a corollary, and though it's, it's in the Bible, but not expressed in those exact words, so let me paraphrase, it's more blessed to serve than to be served. That is, you'll change the world more, or at least your part of the world more, and you'll be happier in life if you serve. Well, I was told I could use this little talk to both challenge and encourage your students. So here's the challenge. You're in the next few years going to be picking a career, and I want to urge you to pick one where you can best serve others. There are thousands of those, but let that be part of your criteria. How can I best serve? And just in case you haven't thought of it, and again, I didn't, it wasn't on my radar at your age, I wish some of you would consider teaching. As one who didn't find his calling until his calling found him in his 40s, I could say nowhere was I more productive and more happy than when I entered the classroom. So that's my challenge. And the encouragement is similar. I know you face huge obstacles in the world in 2023, and those of you graduating this year in 2024, gosh, we've never heard of world pandemics, climate issues, political, uh, ethnic, racial, shortages of just about everything. You've got a lot on your plate. But here's the encouragement. There's not one of these problems that can't be significantly addressed indeed changed by a generation of servers. So Canyon Eagles football team now, you take care of business tomorrow and beat those Rangers. Uh, band, we expect your normal superior performance uh, at halftime. Feels devil for you two of us, I'll be watching. And uh, to all of you, go spend your life in serving. For indeed, 
She has taught you how. Thank you. Hall of Fame inductee, Michael Blanton, from the class of 1969. In 1980, Michael Blanton and business partner Dan Harrell built a creative juggernaut that would grow beyond their wildest dreams, not only having a major impact on the music business, but on the entire entertainment business in general. 39 years later, with 7 million albums sold, resulting in multiple platinum and gold records, network television shows launched film pro projects undertaken, and best-selling books published. Time can attest to the clarity of vision Mike Blanton and Harold were given. That vision began in West Texas, where Blanton was born and raised, the oldest son of a dentist. Blanton attended Abilene Christian University, graduating in 1974 with a bachelor's degree in mass communications. After a stint of several growing up jobs in Nashville, Blanton finally returned to Abilene in 1977, meeting and then marrying his wife, Paula. Though he contemplated a run in politics, God had different plans for him when Word Records called and hired Blanton to start as a young A&R representative. A year and a half later, Blanton convinced Word to relocate he and his wife to Nashville so that he could open the Word Records office on Music Row. It was 1978. In 1980, with the deep desire to change the world, Blanton, Harold Production, and Management launched with a young Amy Grant as their first client. They were off to the races. Amy, first signed to Word, later was co-signed to a and Records out of LA. In 1981, Blanton and Harold launched Reunion Records and Reunion Publishing. Reunion became the home for artists like Michael W. Smith and Rich Mullins, as well as Billy Sprague, Kathy Trockley, Gary Chapman, Juice Newton, Brown Bannister, Kim Hill, Michael Marin, Wes King, Ashley Cleveland, Kim Ritchie, and many others. Blanton executive produced almost all of Amy Grant's vast recording album catalog, including, but not limited to, My Father's Eyes in 1979, Age to Age in 1982, a Christmas album in 1983, Straight Ahead in 1984, Lead Me On in 1988, and Heart in Motion in 1992. Blanton also discovered and launched Michael W. Smith, executive producing The Big Picture in 1986, Eye to Eye in 1988, Go Yet West, Young Man, 1990, and many more, including Smith's iconic Christmas records. Blanton has the unique credential as one of the executive producers on three of the most beloved and top-selling Christian songs of all time, Friends by Michael W. Smith, Awesome God by Rich Mullins, and El Shaddai by Amy Grant. During these years, Blanton and Harrell also signed author Frank Peretti to a creative development deal, helping him to release his first multi-million seller, This Present Darkness, in 1986, followed by Piercing the Darkness in 1988 further diversifying their management and creative development portfolio. In 2017, the Gospel Music Association honored Michael Blanton and Dan Terrell as inductees into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame. In 2018, Blanton was able to continue partnering with a group named Vertigo, launching a live stream music show, also launching a new artist development company named Halogen working alongside famed producer Phoenix Stone from the bands Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. In addition, Blanton has also been involved in the film Cowboy Entertainment, a film production initiative partnering with the Oscar winner, writer, and producer Terry Benedict from the film Hacksaw Ridge. In addition to his induction into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame, he is a member of the Gospel Music Association, recognized as a is a lifetime member of the National Association of Recording Arts and Sciences and a member of the County Music Association. Blanton has been married to his wife, Paula, for 46 years. They currently reside in Brentwood, Tennessee. Mr. Blanton, welcome to the Canyon High School Hall of Fame. 
We are proud to induct you today. Mr. Blanton could not be with us today as he lives and works in Nashville, Tennessee, but he shared a video with us so he can greet us. Good morning, greetings uh, Canyon High School. Michael Blanton here in Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. And I thought it'd be fun to show you where I get to play and get to work. This is the, one of the largest SSL studios uh, in the, there's only 55 of these control boards in the entire world. And one of them is here in Nashville at Insight Studios. So I thought it'd be great to show you this and show you what we get to work on and what we get to do when we're here working in the studio. For me, let me just be quick to say, I'm incredibly honored, I'm blown away that I'm being <coughs> inducted to the Hall of Fame at Canyon High School. I love my years at Canyon High School. I've been more my purple and white uh, Ralph Lauren shirt just to uh, be honoring me at Canyon High for that. But I uh, love my time there. In fact, people ask me all the time, where are you from? And I always say, well, I'm from Texas. I grew up in Texas. So Amarillo, Canyon have always, will always be home for me. One of the things that I learned in leaving Canyon High is that I thought when I left that I was going to probably be a dentist. My dad was a dentist, and I thought, you know what, that's probably what I'll be. I'll be back in Amarillo and be working at that. Life has a way of changing your direction. And I'll tell you what I learned is that, and something I've told my kids over the years, is your 20s are about chasing your passion. Uh, find your passion. Uh, I told my kids, if you want to be a ski, you know, ski instructor, if you want to be a photographer, if you want to be a music maker, do the things that really are your passion. Go to college, but pursue your passion. Do not pursue your career. Let your career come to you later. Pursue your passion. Your passion is, is really what's in your heart that's going to come out. And uh, so when I, when I got out, I thought I was going to be a, a dentist, but when I got to college, I found out that I really love music. And a, a short story about that is I came to Nashville, actually tried to get a job working, and uh, worked out at Opryland at the court time. But then that led to me actually uh, trying to get a job in the music industry, and I couldn't get a job. Nobody would hire me. So I actually moved back to Texas thinking, okay, it's time for me to grow up and get a big boy job and uh, go to work. But I, I did that, and then right after I went back to Texas, then a record label called and said, We'd like to talk to you about coming to work for us. That's how my music career started, is that I pursued my passion, <coughs> and then it wasn't working out, but somehow it found me anyway. And it became my career, which is kind of a, a different way to go. But besides your passion, you have to pursue your purpose. I truly believe God's got a purpose for every person uh, that's watching this video right now. Uniquely you. And you got to find your purpose. And the purpose is not about you. It's about what you're going to do to make the world a better place. It's about what you do for other people, how you serve. It's been a big part of my personal faith walk, but it's about finding your purpose. So you pursue your passion because it's what's coming out of your heart, but your purpose is what you'll get the most joy out of your entire life. So my, uh, my wishes to all of you today is you about to be junior seniors about to graduate. It's just do not miss this incredible opportunity to be uh, the best that you can be. Find your purpose, find your passion, pursue that, and let your career come from those two, those two uh, directives in your life. I always have <coughs> kids, by the way, I have three kids all married. I've got six grandkids. I've been married 46 years. I always tell them it's more important how you finish than how you start. You're definitely going to have some failures along the way, and you might, that's where you're going to learn most about who you are. But do not be afraid of failure. Let failure kind of guide you to life is really going to be the best success story that you'll have. So that's my, my one word of wisdom sitting in Nashville in front of this beautiful board. I, I, I trust and uh, pray that you all have an incredible life down here. So thank you for inducting me again. Sorry I can't be there, but God bless you all. Elementary, Canyon Junior High, and graduated from Canyon High School in 1979. 
While at CHS, he was involved in football, student council, building trades, choir and musical stage crew, and he was a class officer. After high school, he went to work in the construction trades and highway maintenance. Started college later at Texas Tech and eventually graduated from West Texas A&M University in 1994. In January 1983, Tracy married the former Lisa Whittle and was blessed with two beautiful daughters, Shayna and Stacy. They also graduated from Kenyon High School in 1981, 2003, and 2006, respectively. From 1985 through February 29, 2012, Tracy worked for the Texas Department of Transportation, first in the Randall County Maintenance Section. In 1994, he promoted into the Traffic Operations Office, first as CAD draftsman, and later as a project manager. In 2000, he was given the opportunity to move into the role as safety coordinator and in 2003 became the safety officer for the 17 countywide Amarillo district. He has served as a deacon and elder in the Christian faith, was on the board of the Golden Spread Amos community in the early 2000s, served as a volunteer with Texas Department of Corrections, mostly with Karis Prison Ministry for over 20 years is currently on the board of the Dispute Resolution Center and also volunteers with the Kenyon and Amarillo Celebrate Recovery Groups. On May 1st, 2014, Tracy was sworn in as Justice of the Peace, Randall County, Precinct 1, Place 1. He was appointed to finish the term of Judge Jerry Bigham. He has been elected to three terms since, starting January 1st, 2015. He has served on faculty for the Texas Justice Court Training Center. He is very blessed to continue to serve the citizens of Randall County in the city of Canyon as their local justice court judge number one as a proud Canyon Eagle. Mr. Bird, welcome to the Canyon High School Hall of Fame. We are proud to conduct you today. Please come and share a few words with our audience. Involved because he had to 
make the decision that the breathing fire portion had to be taken out. <laughs> it was a real experience. Did you take now, Mr. Perry? I'm a licensed pyrotechnician now. So if you ever want to add a little flash flash boom boom to the national anthem, you probably can have a lead with you. Okay? Back in those days, we were really pushing him a little. But it was so popular that we got booked for a pep rally. We got booked for the student council regional convention over at WT, so it was a lot of fun. It's also mentioned that I played football for the C. Now, the funny thing about that, my senior year, we didn't wear a C. We had this big eagle on the side of our helmet, so that I think was probably the only year that happened. Uh, but I was a defensive captain on that team. Our team went 8-1-1. One one. Lost one game, tied one. And uh, back in those days, to go to the playoffs, you had to win district. And the one game we lost was against Lubbock Escapado, and that was on my 18th birthday. But we sat at home after that. Now the defense I got captain had 32 points scored on it the whole year. And 16 points were scored that last game. So that was a, a great memory. Now my high school experience was also noted by some negative things. Spring break of my junior year, I became famous for taking an extended spring break with another individual here in town. And when we got back, it was labeled a major disciplinary infraction. And that resulted in getting removed from all extracurricular activities. Student council, class officer, all the things. Mr. Summers, who's also a member of this Hall of Fame, we're quite familiar with each other through those days. But I can guarantee you this, I was shown a whole lot of grace through that time by my parents. I also got to acknowledge Dr. David Beckel and his, life, his late wife, Mary, who also extended a lot of grace. But that event brought about the choice. And the choice was do I quit or do I battle back for my senior year? It was hard battling against all the negativity that I had brought on myself. There was anybody else to blame me. But I did find that it was worth it. Now, the class of 79 who I graduated with got to graduate in a brand new big gymnasium, which now came to junior high. Now, as far as I know, we're the only class that ever graduated from there because they figured out that that brand new big gymnasium was way too small for graduation uh, of a class of 200 plus students. But I do remember that night, Dr. Marty Coolen, who was my classmate, walked across the stage to get his diploma. And to see the physical adversity that he had surpassed to do that was phenomenal. Marty had gotten hit by a car when we were at Rex Hughes. It was actually at his house. He lived up the intersection of 217 in Washington, where the flash of is on the way to Powder Canyon. So he was in a coma a long time and came back to school in fifth grade in a wheelchair and then started navigating two crutches in junior high. And that night he walked across the stage, no assistance. And Marty's a tremendous, tremendous man. And he's Who's done a lot. So it's, it's an honor to be in the same Hall of Fame this morning. Now it was mentioned that uh, after high school I was in construction. I took what they call now, it's got an actual name, it's called a cap here. And uh, inadvertently started a career with the Texas Highway Department. And the thing about after graduation, I didn't have a clue. I didn't have any goals. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So that year was spent trying to figure that out. And after a year of working every day, and driving a snowplow, and all the things that go with working with the highway department, I started college at Tech, and I didn't see a whole lot of success. I did complete two semesters, and I ended back up here at WT the next year, and completed two more semesters, and then kind of fell off the college field. Just wasn't, wasn't getting it. Uh, Lisa and I have been married and started our family, and as they stated, in 1994, I did graduate from West Texas A&M University. Go Buffs, but I tell people I capitalized a four-year degree into a 15-year plan. And I guarantee you, it took a whole lot of family support to complete that goal. Because that was a goal. And it, it took it a challenge, but we got it done. So my career at TechStop, which was also mentioned, came to a close on February the 29th, 2012. I chose to leave on leap day. 
So I worked part of five decades for the for the highways, and going from Rodan to traffic engineering to safety was was that career choice. But I felt I needed a new challenge at that time in 2012 and 2013 were that extremely challenging. We had the birth and the loss of our grandson, the mighty Miller James Weisberger. And that was a, <coughs> once again was a challenging time, but choosing not to quit through all that process has been totally worth it. It's never been easy, but it's always been worth it. So I can look back and see the Lord's divine intervention in my next career, which was with Randall County as your local justice court judge here in Kenya. Now, May 1st is when I started. I was supposed to start January, well, May 1st of 2014. The election was in place, and this is what I mean by God's intervention. I didn't have an opponent, which was really odd. So I won the, the election in March and started going in and following Judge Bigham around. Judge Bigham was a former principal here at Canyon. Uh, I know my kids had Judge Bigham before he was Judge Bigham. Uh, his wife, Marsha, is one more Hall of Fame member here out on the wall. So anyway, that career started and it was, uh, it's been a blessing to say the least, but the way everything fell into place was part of a greater plan that I never had imagined. Uh, and it has been a great honor to serve the community. You might talk about service. Uh, Mike Bella, Mike Blanton, what are the bees? The B Amigos, I guess, as far as the introduction goes. Uh, but I just want to thank everybody for giving me a chance to start a third term this past January. We're now serving. You know, the neatest part about, I think, what I do now is get to work with youth. And a lot of times I'll come across a young person that made a bad choice, bad decision like I did. And what we can do now is help convince them that that's a stepping stone, not a stumbling block. And so even though things can go bad, they can also turn out for the good. So I just want to leave you with this. The world tells us typically that everything revolves around location, location, location. And there's a lot of validity to that in certain situations, but my outlook on success is more about communication, communication, communication. And I can guarantee you, I don't know where you're going to land, what career opportunities you're going to see, but if you can learn how to communicate verbally and also by writing, you'll see many doors open in your life and with work opportunities and advancement in whatever field you find yourself. But as it's also been mentioned this morning, the most important type of communication that you will ever have is a spiritual communication. And having that spiritual communication is going to undergird all the opportunities that now you have or that will pop up as you go through life. There's an author named John Piper that wrote a statement that says, we live life forward, but we understand it backwards. And I can look back and see exactly where the Lord's hand was in directing and orchestrating the events in my life that's led us to today. So, I had no idea that someday I would be Judge Bird. It's, it's kind of cool. When that first started, we'd go somewhere and somebody would call me Judge and they said, okay, that's kind of weird. Well, <laughs> they said that's our new nickname, so you kind of get used to it. But I want to thank everybody that uh, has had a hand in putting this on. I want to state that grace in our lives is amazing. <clears throat> Thanks for all those who showed me grace over the years, and I hope I can do that as well in current occupation. So, with that, I will say this. You guys be well, be smart, stay hydrated, and go Eagles.